The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! <laughs> you think he's gone? He's not gone! That's the whole point! He's never gone! Is this some radical new therapy? You see? <laughs> well, I must have not been paying attention. So funny. When you were just 15 years later, it's still funny. I know, I know. Do you think that you could repeat the question? And I listen more attentively. Let's thank our sponsors. We want as much time with our guests as we can. Yeah, we do. Let's thank Century 21, McLennan Real Estate, the Zanny Pesci Law Office in Methuen, Marston and Sun Construction, EIS Investigation and Gun Training. The Bonfire Wellness Center in North Andover. Tomo and Shaken Seafood. Clear Path for Veterans, New England. AFC Urgent Care in Methuen and North Andover. Pleasant Valley Landscaping Contractors. Patrick's Eatery, which is also Harrison's and Better Burger Bar, I think, now. Yeah. Although that might not be the case anymore. I haven't oh. checked today. So uh -oh. Every day it changes. Ah. Prime Insurance, insurance the Doug Mercurio Law Office. 11 Restaurant in Lawrence. Chris's Barbershop in Salem, New Hampshire. Enterprise Bank. W3ON Website Development. Peralt Chiropractic and AJ Goodwin Plumbing. Also a free shout out to our buddy Wally at Harrow's Pies who helps the homeless. And JG's Ice Cream who help everybody in the community. Those guys are great. They're Jafrida Brothers. We love them. And hopefully they're going to be watching today. We got a candidate for them, I think. Oh, nice. I think. Oh, that was a long list. I would expect Papa Buzz out of Jim Sassioni, but maybe we'll get lucky. Hey. Ba -ba -ba -ba. No, I guess we didn't know. I had a feeling he'd be a little too serious today. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Oh. What's up, honey? Are you going to pull your mic up? It's like right up to your lips. All right, let's get this. I mean, what do you... Good. 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 Yep. Good. Yep. I'm still having a Facebook problem. Because yep. I always do. There's always a Facebook problem. Every yep. It never... It's never not there. It's just, just sometimes to, better than others. I just want to make sure I don't call you Mike. That doesn't... <laughs> Okay. I've been called worse, believe yeah. me. Just today alone I've been called worse. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. All right, now we're up. All right, let's get this show on the road. Hi, how you guys doing? My name's Tom Duggan. Here with the Paying Attention Podcast. Hi, you top two guys. Smoke shop at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Got a great show for you guys today. Uh, we, there is going to be a special election in Methuen for mayor. Now, um, the mayor's seat um, is is vacant because of the passing of Mayor Perry. And um, instead of having an election on election day when everybody else was going to vote for president and everything else, they decided to do it on December 10th when nobody would really remember that there would be an election. Uh, so I... Uh, the candidates are, um, who's now acting mayor, city councilor, DJ Beauregard, uh, and Jim Sarcioni, who's a local businessman. And we actually kind of know each other a little bit um, from, like, I don't know, 10 years ago, he used to advertise with the Valley Patriot, which we always appreciate. Yeah. It's always a good way to get in, get in good with me. Um, but we, we, I think we have never really met in person, have we? Like, isn't today the first time we've actually physically met? No, I, one other time. I think we were at um, a Christmas party, maybe the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Oh, Columbus the Chamber, right? Yes, 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 yeah. yes, you're right. Yeah. Yep. And you came over and you were like, hey, how you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm Jim. And I'm like, oh, hi, Jim. I had no idea who, yeah. like, who you were right. until somebody said, that, that's, that's the guy that advertised with you. I'm like, oh, yeah. I better go back over and say hi to him. Um, so you're running, you're, you've decided to run for this special election in Methuen, and the, whoever wins this is going to be only mayor for a year. And then next year, you've got to come up for re-election for the two-year term, because right now you're just filling the, on, you're filling what's left over of Mayor Perry's term. Correct. So given that DJ Beauregard, smart kid, um, is entrenched, like he's the, he's the establishment candidate. He's who all the people on the inside want because they know him and they, everybody's already doing favors for each other. What made you want to jump into, like I asked this of Mayor Perry, and I think I've asked this of every mayoral candidate. You're a successful business guy, people like you. Why would you want this? 
Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, a lot of it is historic because I've been in Methuen my whole life. And when you see a transformation of a city that, um, you know, almost goes, if I, you know, if I could use a cliche, you know, almost from like a... Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, from a, like a bedroom community to a gateway city where it's no longer generation after generation, um, you know, establishing itself in the community. It's just people, you know, more in and out like a revolving mm -hmm. door. Much more of a transient population. Yes. And uh, even with the newer uh, your population today, because uh, as you know, um, Methuen is, you know, 50% Hispanic now. Uh, their, cultural, their culture and their values are very similar in a way that they want their families, you know, to continue, mm -hmm. you know, their legacy in the community. Right. And I'm not sure Methuen offers that and from my perspective. And your wife is, is she Dominican? She is. Yeah, she was so, born in La Vega. So, so the, the Latino community really has a vested interest in having somebody who has at least a hand in the Latino community and understands what, what, you know, what their issues are. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, not to mention I had a business in Lawrence for 10 years um, and I have a lot of good friends, uh, you know, work in the mayor's office actually. And um, th there's no doubt about it, right? Because they're challenges uh, might not just be in line with, you know, the everyday challenges, you know, or the, or the common challenges that have been in Methuen, let's say, over the last, you know, 10, 15, mm -hmm. 20 years. Mm -hmm. So um, they definitely need a voice. Right. Um, you know, to bring, you know, especially when it comes to, like, housing um, or uh, economic development, you know, as far as, you know, small business, you know, mm -hmm. that, that culture is very... Um, engulfed in that type of, you know, way of life, right. you know? So if you, if you were to run and you were to win, uh, what would you do to reach out to the Latino community, give them a voice? Because yeah. to me, that's the biggest deficit Methuen has right now. I, I can't disagree with that um, because... You can or you can't? I cannot. Okay. Right, because communication is always a, a challenge, and it, it's not always about being online, right? Hey, go to our website, go to our website. Right, right. Not, you know, not everybody works that way. Um, you know, and you have a newsletter for the city. How's that, you know, propagated through, through to everybody? How, how do you get the word out? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I always thought of maybe having um, a secondary, like, advisory board. You know, where you bring, you know, some people, not all just prominent people, you know, different individuals, uh, you know, in g different demographics in the city together and kind of talk about what are those issues and how do we communicate that? Because uh, there's, there's so many, there's no one vehicle mm -hmm. to reach everybody. So, um, you know, and my intention too is not just to, you know, come in and upset the apple cart, right? It's to really learn and understand, you know, how business is done mm -hmm. and, um, you know, advocate what these visions are that coming from the residents, right? right? You know, it's like, again, something as simple as, I mean, you go get a coffee before you get home, you get a an email, they want a survey. How was the coffee? How was the service? <laughs> right. right. I mean, when's the last time a city surveyed their residents and said, hey, you know. How are we doing? How are we doing? Here's right. 10 things on the list. What, what, what do you think? Right. I, I'm not sure it's ever been done. Right. And, and so you're, you're looking to bring, it sounds like you're looking to bring small business sense to running the, the municipalities. Do I have that yeah. right or wrong? Yeah, that, okay. I mean, that's, that, that's one of the components. I okay. mean, when I look around with doing, I get, I, get, I get a little discouraged, discouraged because um, it seems the landscape is, and uh, you know, not for a better, lack of a better word, but littered with, like, national franchises. Right. You know, and that, and that takes away from... You know, the mom and pop shops. Right. And if you think of Methuen in the old days, I mean, I'm third generation here, you know. So when the, the Italians actually migrated from Lawrence, and believe me, the Italians and the Spanish cultures are very similar. Very similar. And, um, you know, they were able to have that opportunity, right? Not everybody's a college graduate, you know. So, and could go into the professional, you know, mm -hmm. workforce. So th that was definitely a... Um, an opportunity for them, you know, to support their family, you know, and I don't know, Methuen, I don't know if Methuen's that small business friendly. Right. You know? I see Methuen, and I say this all the time, I've even written an editorial about it, because I was there when Lawrence collapsed. 
that Methuen is exactly where Lawrence was in 1990, right before the collapse, right before they went into receivership. Right before, because everyone in the city council and everybody in city hall had a friend working in the police department, the fire department, the DPW. So nobody could ever cut anywhere. Anytime they tried to cut, you had a big uproar among people who were very powerful, who had very powerful families, who were all, all making phone calls. And they had this, what I used to call the friends and family plan. You couldn't cut anything because, every, because Lawrence... The municipality was so littered with family members of politi- politicians, even state reps and state senators, that when it came time to really be fiscally responsible in the city, you couldn't be because that person's job you were cutting was the brother of a state rep or the cousin of a, of a city councilor. And I see exactly that going on right now in Methuen. I see, I, I see the shell game with the money. I see the friends and family plan everywhere you look, everywhere you look, especially in City Hall. Um, and, and, I'm, and I'm wondering, as a new guy coming in, are you going to be able to stand up against that? Well, I think that's a big differentiator between uh, myself and DJ. I'm not a career politician. I have no allegiance to anybody. I don't owe anybody any favors. Um, I have no, uh, you know, big-time campaign contr- contributors that I, you know, I, I owe favors to. Um, my family's grown up and moved on. I'm in the, the grandkid stage. Right. Right? So I'm looking, I, f- I'm looking forward to that stage. And, and I, on the best four-hour grandfather going. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that's a challenge today. Yeah. But, um, but, you know, it, it's funny because, you know, one of the things that uh, – I thought of, you know, is when I tried to do this, I called up my two daughters and I said, uh, you know, I'm thinking about doing this. Can you reach out to your friends? They go, wow, almost simultaneously. Uh, Dad, our friends don't live in Methuen anymore. Right. You know, and, and that kind of bothered me a little bit. So, you know, my generation was like 70% of us at least came back for a while or still there. Today, 70% of that millennial generation. They're gone. They're gone. Yep. The first day. Yep. So, but to answer the question, um, I... I'm a fair person, you know what I mean? So I'm not going to play those, those games, those right. backroom deals, or the, oh, I owe you one. I, you know, and, and you can, you know, my word's everything, you know? Right. My reputation's everything to me. Uh, win or lose, I don't think you're going to find anybody that's going to, you know, you know, talk, you know, derogatory about me. Right. It's just not who I am. Right. I mean, I've never even been in a fight, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, but clearly... Um, It's residents first, you know. You know what I mean. The fair person, you know. I'm I'm not big on the, uh, you know. And don't take it out of context. The whole uh, like DEI thing, right? Mm-hmm. I believe you, you get something on merit. You get something on skills. You get something on, you know, what you've already accomplished in life. Right. That's how you get rewarded. So unlike the previous mayor and the city council is now, or the previous city council, you're not going to be welcoming Black Lives Matter to be rallying in Methuen and going along with all that DEI stuff. Oh, uh, no, I, I, I'm, not an, I'm not an advocate of, uh, you know, and either way, any of that right. far right or far left. I, I'm not a, uh, you know, I like a peaceful life, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so I'm not rallying. Every, every candidate that runs for this, and I noticed it a little bit uh, with your opponent on that forum that they had that they call a debate. Um, they, whenever somebody runs for anything, state rep, mayor, city council, whatever, it's I'm for public safety, yay, I'm for education, yay, but it doesn't really mean anything. So do you have any specific ideas or specific plans on how you would improve public safety, how you would improve education in Methuen, how you would improve the different city departments that people rely on for services? Well, I mean, education, and that's another thing, too, and I don't want to deviate too much, but, you know, people talk about, uh, you know, property values, mm-hmm. right? And everybody gets hung up on the whole economic, economic condition, right? So right now, pro- housing's through the roof. But that's because of the supply and demand issue, right? And that's because of the, the, the way we are economically today, interest rates and the availability of housing. Realistically... Property values are based on education in your city, Mm -hmm. safety in your city, housing or economic development, right? The first thing people say is, oh, are these good schools? Right. Right. I want to put my kids in these good schools. That's really what pertains to your property values. But to answer your question, on education, you got to invest, right? I mean, that's the nucleus. What that said, that's the nucleus of our community. But when I hear invest and when people like me, because I'm a conservative, hear the word invest, we hear spending. Right? When we hear invest, we hear yeah. spending. And we look at the enormous amounts of money being spent overall in education. Oh, and we wonder, no all this money being spent hasn't improved it even a little bit. In fact, it's gotten worse over the last 40 years. Maybe investing might not be the answer? 
Well, it's, I think it's, it's efficient investing, okay. wiser investing. So, um, for instance, um, our starting salaries for teachers is, is not competitive, right? So there's 35 vacancies in our, in our school system for teachers. Right. So maybe in that area alone, if we can at least get people into our system, um, you, you know, that would help. I mean, unfortunately, yeah. I mean, education is 50% typically of any municipality's budget. Sure. Right? So, but again, um, that population grows. And what people don't realize today is the, the population that's really growing, especially in Methuen, is low-income families. Right. 50% of the student base is from low-income families. Mm-hmm. There's another 19% that are, uh, you know, English learning or uh, disabilities, right? Uh, special education. Mm-hmm. That, that's it's huge. There's, that's huge. Right. There's, only, there's no way around that. Um, but the middle managers seem to always get the raises. The middle managers in the school system always. Uh, I, used to, I sat on a school committee for three years. Yeah. They always get the they always get the contracts and the raises and the special bennies and the and the uh, professional development to go get a degree. And once they got that degree, now they're a higher step because now you have to pay them more because they're more educated. Yeah. And that snowball never and that never stops. You end up just paying more and more for people who are shuffling papers, not the people in the classroom who are hands on with these kids and actually shaping people's lives. Right, and that's basically what I was trying to get to. You know, it's almost the bottom up. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that that's where I think the investment needs now um, in, in those types of programs. Or maybe we can uh, circumvent some of that cost with you know better technology. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe we factor in how does technology help in teaching? Right. You know, and try to alleviate some of that direct one-on-one stuff. And and as far as safety is concerned, I mean, wh- where's the end? Right. Um, to me. Uh, school resource offices, that's definitely a requirement that, that has proven it's a, a positive factor and it's not obtrusive. And when you say school resource officers, you mean police officers in the schools? Correct. Yes. One police officer in a school. That's worked out very well in Methuen. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm an advocate of the uh, Methuen Police Department. So, uh, with that said, um, I, 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 don't, I don't like the next step, right? I don't like the the obtrusive security tactics such as, you know, uh, metal detectors in schools and stuff like that. To me, that's already now, you know, that's already putting the kids at a disadvantage, you know, mentally. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They're already, oh, wow. They're already walking into school in a, in a negative way. Right. You know, so I don't think that helps at a mental health aspect of it all, period, mm-hmm. you know. And, you know, again, with that uh, misfortune of, you know, having those low-income, high-percentage um, children, and those uh, children with special needs, um, you know, there needs to be, uh, you know, more programs to help those kids accelerate. You, um, if you win, you're going to be in charge of the police department, the fire department, public safety. Everybody says they love public safety. Everyone says they, they want to increase funding for public safety. Do you have any, any other ideas other than, like, the typical standard answer of we love public safety, hooray, um, as to what you'd like to do with the police and the fire department to make things better for the people who live there? Well, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a numbers guy, Tom. So let's look at the stats, right? What are the stats over the last five years? What are the... Statistics on crime, you know, uh, violent crimes or, you know, just petty crimes. Where are we going with that? Are we succeeding? Are we winning the battle? Are we mm-hmm. losing the battle, right? So are we bringing in the right, right resources maybe outside the community, other law enforcement agencies, if, if those numbers aren't going in the right direction? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think a lot of that is statistically based. It's kind of hard for me to say just, you know, from the outside looking in because... What do you that, think about the job, if anything, that uh, Chief McNamara is doing? Again, no complaints. I, I think he's doing a great job. Yeah. I, you know, I know a lot of people um, in the police force. Again, I've been here for 50 years. I've seen people s- start their first day and they're retired now. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. So, uh, you know, I, I, I've been around, uh, um, uh, you know, it's a small town. Uh, correct me. Small Population-wise, it's still a small town. Yeah, really, but, you know, of. every time I use town, I, I get, know, I get I know. slept. Yeah. You know? The petty tyrants out there are always it, looking at Yeah. You the commas in the wrong place. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. Know. So, oh, well, yeah, I get that too. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I like to think, uh, you know, we're a city, but I wish we had a town mentality. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, I've heard great things about Chief McNamara, um, you know, historically. And, uh, again, uh, you know, I think he's doing a great job. I you know, I, I play golf with, you know, some, some of the guys on the workforce, uh, you know, there, um, you know, both sides of the offices and patrolmen. And, uh, 
they have nothing but good things to say. One of the most important things any elected official has to do as part of their job, whether you're a state rep, whether you're a mayor, whether you're a city council, is constituent services. How would you handle constituent services differently than it's been handled in the past, if yeah, at all? Yeah, that, that, that's a good question. Uh, constituent services. I think they need to be involved more. I don't think we involve our communities feedback by having these, you know, maybe side advisory committees and again in different demographics because a kid at 25 might have different needs than somebody at 45 having a family, somebody at 65 that's a senior and mm -hmm. retiring. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I, I think we need to draw from that pool. And, you know, really get people's feedback instead of, you know, you, you know, you can't be a dictator sitting there, I know what's best, or the council, yeah, we know what's best, right. making decisions, why not? One of the things that I noticed is before they get elected, this is true for DJ, it was true for Neil Perry, it was true for every other mayor, every other city council, when they're running, they see the voters as their constituents, they see the people on the streets as one of them, then they get in, and everywhere they go every night, they go to the same ribbon cuttings, they go to the same events, and it, their constituents be, start to become the insiders, and instead of of listening to the people on the streets who are now the plebes, they start listening to the people on the inside. And that those are the people that are looking that they're looking to impress. Those are the people that they're looking to please. Um, one of my pet peeves in Methuen is that their charter states that they cancel their primaries for the local mayor's city council school committee if there aren't enough people to eliminate in a primary. And in Lawrence, they do the opposite. In Lawrence, if there's nobody on the ballot, they still have a primary because people can write someone in. And you might have five people doing write-ins, and then the top two go to the November ballot, and now those names are already on the ballot. Whereas in Methuen, you really have to win on a write-in in a final, which is much harder, and I call that the Incumbent Protection Act. And I've been begging the mayors and city councils for 20 years to change this, to change that in Methuen, because all it does is really help the incumbent. Is that something that you would be willing to at least look at changing? No, I'm open-minded on anything, Tom. So that uh, clearly, again, I'm not a career politician. So when you when you drill down to the specifics like that, um, you know, I need to do more due diligence in that area. But I'm open-minded to everything. Why mm -hmm. not? Whatever makes it fair. Right. You know, I, mean, I don't like one-sided anything. Right. Do you know what I mean? So, um, you know, with that said, why not? Especially for other communities. I always like to look to other comparable communities and see, well, how are they doing it? Right. Right. So why? Do you have to reinvent the wheel all the time if someone's already done all that due diligence and coming up, okay, this is the best way. Oh, by the way, you know, Havel's doing it. Okay, you know, uh, Lawrence is doing it. Lowe's doing it. Well, it must be, it must be a good idea. One of the things we talk about on this show a lot is the illegal immigrant, the illegal alien problem in the Merrimack Valley. And one of the things that we learned about a year and a half ago was that the federal government and the state were loading illegal aliens into Methuen, in one location we learned was where the hotel is that everybody complains about. And when I talked about it on this show, that night, Mayor Perry and two city councilors admonished me for spreading misinformation, saying those are not illegal aliens. Come to find out. Because I freaked out. Because whenever I get something wrong, I want to make sure that my viewers, my readers get the right information. I did some research on it, called some state reps, called the state. As it turns out, they were illegal aliens when they came here. It's just that the Biden administration gave them temporary citizenship status so they could place them in communities like Methuen. And all the city councilors and all the politicians in Methuen, instead of saying, yes, this is a problem, here's how we want to address it, they ran around saying, it's not true, it's not true, they're not illegal aliens, as if no problem here, nothing to see. And what I'm looking for in the next mayor, no matter who it is, is someone who's going to take a hard line on that. We've got to put a stop to importing illegal aliens into our communities when we don't have enough money to take care of the people that were already here. Well, that's a good point because, uh, and there's a, there's a few things I'd like to touch upon that. Uh, number one, first and foremost, it's unfortunate for those people, right? Because they're not all criminals. Right. Right. And the Biden administration put them in a terrible situation, right? Administration, Biden administration, put them in a terrible situation where, you know, they don't, they don't know what to do. It's like taking your family and going and, you know, drop them off in East Oshkosh, Washington. Right. You know what I mean? So th th there's a little sympathy for that. Um, but in conjunction with that, you're absolutely right. The state, if the state's going to do it, first of all, it, it should be accompanied by some funding. I mean, the burden on the schools is tremendous. It's huge, yeah. You know? So, um, but, you know, needless to say, you know, uh, I'm certainly not a sanctuary city advocate, you know? So, um, clearly that situation needs to be managed. 
Now, mm-hmm. as it stands right now, I, I believe there's an outside entity managing that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I, that really needs some. Be, be, you really need to drill down, get involved, find out what's happening, and um, you know, progress the situation. Because it's not just the expense of the schools; it's the expense of the police department, Everything. the fire department, the yeah. the sewer system, the infrastructure. Right? You just you're importing people. And all of it, they were never, yeah. that were never part of the fabric of Methuen. And all of a sudden, and these aren't people who are, already have jobs, already have educations right. that can contribute to the community. Everything is a drain. Everything, that, everything right. from, at least for the first few years that they're here until they get stable, right? Right. And, and at the same time that we have people who are from Methuen, who are on the streets, who are living on the streets, who are living in tents on the rail trail, who are living in Lawrence behind Bay State Road, who are behind Mr. Tuck's, because they're homeless, and Methuen, by the way, offers no services to the homeless. So I guess my next question is, if you become mayor, will you offer some kind of services for the homeless so that they're not draining the services in Methuen because every homeless person goes, I mean in Lawrence, every homeless person goes to Lawrence because they think that's where the services are. And what happens is Lawrence gets overwhelmed. And they're oversaturated with the homeless. And if each community took care of the few homeless that they have, Lawrence wouldn't have half the problems that they have. Okay, I'll take your word on that. Uh, because, again, uh, you know, I don't have all the information in, in that category. But I can guarantee you one thing. Um, if Methuen doesn't have any resources, it should. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, one of my big pet peeves with the, uh, with the city today is they've had a, a, a grant right of salary on the budget for two years. Okay, and it's never been filled. And at that point, I mean, you should be able to train somebody, right, for thirty-six thousand dollars a year or whatever mm-hmm. the budget allowed. And um, this could certainly fall in that category, right? There's got to be grant money, federally, state, privately, mm-hmm. to help in that area. So right. that that should certainly be a priority to look at. But right. you need somebody to go look for that money, and then you can establish those resources. Yeah, one of the one of the frustrations that we have uh, when we're dealing with TMF is that. At least 50% of the people that we deal with, maybe more, are from Andover, are from Dracut, are from Methuen, and they're in Lawrence. And you talk to the Lawrence officials, and their attitude is, for the most part, if we offer more services, we just end up draining the rest of the Merrimack Valley here into Lawrence. And so we're not actually helping anybody anymore because if we help this guy, 10 more people come into Lawrence looking for that help because word spreads fast. Uh, and just seems to me like if in my hometown of North Andover did more for people who well, look, we, we had a guy from Andover. He lived in Ruggiero Way, very, very expensive neighborhood, million, two million dollar homes. His wife took him for everything. He lost his job. He got addicted. He ends up on the streets. We find him in Lawrence and he starts telling us his story. I, start, I, I think he's full of shit. So I start looking him up when I get home. Turns out he's right. Like everything he told me was true. And here's a guy who's on the streets of Lawrence. And the people in Lawrence are feeding him, the private people, but the city won't do anything for him because he's not from Lawrence. And Andover doesn't offer any of those services. And we have people like that all over Lawrence. And if just Bethune and Andover, North Andover, Drake and the areas had something, like every community has got a senior center. Almost every community has got a youth center. Why doesn't every community have a homeless center where they can go for one-stop shopping, find out what's available to them, if they want to go to detox, if they want to get housing, if they need, uh, you know, uh, food benefits, whatever it is. And it just seems like we spend all this money on senior centers. I know Methuen's trying to get a, uh, a youth center. just seems like we should have a homeless center in every yeah. community. Well, Methuen has a youth center. Oh, it does. On Tenny Street, yeah. Tenny Street. Oh, uh, Linda Susie. Linda Susie. She's right, been running that right, for 30 right. years, right? I, you know, it's, I never think of that as she, a youth center. That, but oh, it is. Oh, it certainly Man is. Inc. She has done wonderful. Yeah. So, but they are looking at the, the old central school there. Uh, mm-hmm. Half of that is going to be a youth center. But, um, and you know, we got the, and even our senior center, right? That's not just for Bethune. Right. Right. So, um, but with that said, that almost sounds like a, like a state issue, mm-hmm. right? Because, you know, just like they do like chapter 70 funding for education, chapter 90 funding for, um, you know, infrastructure, you know, all that money coming from the state, whether it's lottery money or, mm-hmm. you know, revenue, maybe that's a good idea. Why doesn't a, a state rep or, you know, even bigger than that well you know you know like a maki or elizabeth warren why aren't they working on something like 
to establish those geographically in each area and fund them from the state. That, that, that's a fabulous idea. Right, right. So if, if, if but you, everything has, excuse me, but everything has limitations, right? right. So even if it had some resources, there has to be a limitation to sure. it, right? It can't just be, you know, a right. line out the door. No, I agree. So I know you're a businessman, right? You've been in insurance for forever. Yeah. And well, you've I've been a, more than that. But go ahead. Well, tell me, tell me what, what well, have I spent, you done? I, you know, I spent over, uh, you know, about 20 years in technology working for, you know, large uh, technology companies back on digital equipment, you know, mainframes mm -hmm. flying around the country. Um, and um, then I did, you know, some internet startup companies. Uh, unfortunately, I went 0 for 3. Mm -hmm. So uh, at I bet right around the bubble, right? Right at the bubble. Yeah, I was working yeah. with CMGI. Yeah. So um, I decided, you know, that's it. Let me try something different. So then I jumped in and I started a commercial landscaping company, you know, going after like, you know, conglomerate nursing home uh, corporations, you know, where they had seven, eight nursing homes, hospitals, mm -hmm. 300 unit condo associations. And, you know, I did that for five, six years and realized that, um, you know, these were big contracts, six, seven figure, no, not sorry, six figure contracts. And um, I realized I was a little bit too labor intensive, mm -hmm. you know, in your 40s, so I sold it. And then I um, had a, a restaurant in Lawrence for eight years. And um, Big city. I used to watch Prospect Hill play there when they used to, yeah. before they hit it big. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Robridge, Mikey Robridge, yeah, great yeah. kid. So, and then... Um, you know, I ended up selling that, you know, after eight years, that got a little taxing. That's another one of those, you know, seven day a week, 15 hour day type jobs. So um, when I do something, I'm really invested in it. So I'm all in, right. you know, so no matter what it takes, uh, you know, it's taxing in some businesses. And then I jumped in the last eight years. I've been in, uh, I have an all-state insurance agency, which is non-labor intensive and uh, no inventory control. It's basically just sitting there with a laptop. So, right, right. Um, but again, it was a business that started from scratch. You know, grew up to a you know grew it up to like a two million dollar book of business, not revenue. It's gross premiums. Mm -hmm. You know, it's how they measure the insurance business. So, um, but I'm sorry, what was your? Well, so yeah, no, so, so I guess I guess what I was I wanted I wanted you to tell people about your business experience and what are you gonna what are you gonna do for small businesses? You talked about the 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 chain businesses in Methuen, but the mom and pop shops need a lot of help. What can you do to help? The yeah, businesses, I, I, right? Are you streamlining the permit process. Like, what, exactly, what would you do? Exactly. I'd like to get together, you know, and again, you know, uh, uh, establish a committee in house that brings together, you know, zoning and licensing and permitting and the, the health department and, and say, okay, we're, we're going to be a you know a small business advocate group, right? So we're going to do things to help these people establish a business, not you know work against them. Oh, you got to check this. You need that. You didn't do this. You got to do that. I want to. I want us to be more receptive to that. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same token, I'll personally hold seminars and teach people how to, how to start a business, how to get financing, how to you know, uh, deal with the accounting aspects of, of business, the marketing, the sales, et cetera. So, what is your number one priority? Let's say you – oh, sorry, I didn't want to cut And just one last thing. And then we, you know, we should also establish a, a networking forum of Methuen businesses where all businesses can get together in some way, shape, or form or even uh, you know, a situation like this and they can talk about their business and other residents can access that information and, and hear what their products and services mm -hmm. are and you know, kind of promote each other within the community. So what, if you win, what, what do you want to hit the ground running? What is your number one priority? Yeah, the teachers, what do you want to do? The, the teacher's contract is unavoidable, right? Because, you know, that could snowball into, um, you know, an economic disaster, right? If those teachers go on strike and now these parents are home and they can't go to work or they got to pay for extra right. care for these children, now they're losing income. I mean, that, that could get, uh, lack of a better term, ugly. Mm -hmm. So uh, clearly... First and foremost, you support the teachers, though, right? A hundred percent. Okay. Right, and, and you know, I intend to. They should all be out there. They should all be out there voting for you. Yeah, well, in a I, small uh, election like this, that could make the difference. You know, I, I sympathize with them, but they, they are underpaid. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I wish there was something more directly I could do, but I, I'm certainly going to advocate through the council for them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, you know, if you think about it, thirty percent of our children's adolescent life is spent with a teacher, mm -hmm. you know, and 30% sleeping and 30% with their family, Right. you know, so, uh, you know, just in round numbers. I'm not a big fan of teachers' unions. In fact, I hate teachers' unions. I rail against uh, them all the time. But when I looked at what's going on in Methuen, even I had to sit back and go, yeah, the teachers are getting screwed. 
Yeah, like, they are. I mean, I mean, you know how unions are, mm-hmm. right? So, th- and again, I'm no fan of unions, especially teachers' unions. Uh, yeah, but these these people are getting screwed. In, in this situation, yes, but I mean, you know, it, it's one of those things you can't. Rome wasn't built in a day. Mm-hmm. You know, it's unfortunate that it took this many. You know, I heard a comment the other day. Well, this has been a ten year problem. Well, there's nothing in my life, any problem in my life that's gone ten years. Right. Let's put it that way. So, you know, I don't know why it wasn't. Because it's because it's government. It's because it's government. And so that bothers me a little bit. That you know, why isn't this the five year mark? And let's take a look at it. Right. So it's unfortunate because you know, um, financially, it's a it's a tough situation, right? I mean, so that first and foremost, hitting the ground running, that has to you know, we have to bring everybody together as a team and, and resolve this problem. That you know, over time, today and. Over the next couple of years, for sure. One of the things that I want out of you, and I and and I asked this of Neil when he first ran, and he promised it, and he did it at the beginning, and then he fell right back in with the insiders, is I want someone that's going to call out the insiders. When all the shenanigans are happening behind the scenes, and people come into your office and say, if you do a podcast, I'm voting against your budget, or if, you do, if, if you're friendly with so-and-so, then I'm going to vote against your hires, and... Neil was good at the very beginning because he was still the outsider for the first year and a half. And then, like, he got seduced. He, got, he wanted to go to the insider picnics and be part of that inside yeah. club. And, and I'm looking for somebody who's not going to do that. I'm looking for someone that's going to get in there. And, yes, you have to work with everybody. You have to work with the insiders. But you also have to call them out when they're, when they're pushing people around and bullying people and trying uh, to buy good votes. Word. Good word, because uh, I can't be bullied. Excellent. Yeah, that's and if not, you could put me right here on that day that I do, and call me out. Um, I just have too much life experience, right. you know. Been there, done that, you know. Uh, it, it's just, it's not, it's not right. Yeah. So, I, I can't do it. So I'm going to nip that in the bud. Don't even try, right? right? I want, I want to. Well, they're going to try because they can try, but I want because them to Neil feel. Perry said don't try, and they did, and then he caved. So they're going to keep trying. Yeah. Well, then, um, Mr. Perry, great guy. No yeah. disrespect. Uh, no, I'm not trying to disrespect him. I'm yeah. just saying what happened. No, I right. I know. I just want to. Um, I'm. Uh, I'll, I'll be tougher. I'm tougher. Excellent. So that's you know that, that that that's all I can say. I come from a hard knock school. I mean, uh, you know, I my first ten years of life was in the Lawrence Project Stadium Projects. You know what I mean? I grew up in a uh, broken family. What well, you graduate mean, high school? Seventy nine. Okay, yeah, well, high. A little older than me. Okay. Yeah, but throwing high at that. Yeah. We were the first. Uh, he had a uh, class to go through that school for four okay. years, and yeah. uh, that whole open concept thing. So I grew up on anyway. Boxford Street, which is right outside the stadium projects, right? So yeah. where, oh, I know. where the Kane School used to be. In fact, I was there. There wasn't, even, there wasn't even a Kane School when I was first growing up, yeah. right? So I could look out my back window on Boxford Street and see the stadium projects because there was no school there. Yeah. So we literally grew up, like, even though you were five years ahead of me, we, we literally grew up, like, within a thousand feet of each other. And, and imagine, I remember the Kane School, that was cutting yep. edge when they put glass mm-hmm. on the walls. Mm-hmm. Remember, it was like, uh, it was one level, it was like California schooling, right? right? It yep. was all glass, and it, um, you know, I can still remember teachers, you know, that's a long way from my memory to go back, you sure. know? Um, so, living in the projects was a good experience right. then. Well, ba- well, back then, you didn't have what you have today. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, then you run outside, you got, you know... You had two football teams ready to go. You know, you could play any sport. <laughs> right, right. You know what I yeah. mean? Everybody was ready to go. When, on Boxford Street, I, liked, I used to like to play street hockey. And I couldn't skate, but I loved street hockey. So we were on Boxford Street. Didn't have a lot of traffic. We played street hockey. Whenever we were short, I'd run over to the stadium project. Hey, who wants to play? Yeah. And there was always five or ten kids ready to go. And now we had four teams, right? Right. So it was, it was, always, it was, a, it was a very fun neighborhood to grow up in. Yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely was. We got about three minutes left. What do you want the voters to come away with? There's going to be a lot of people watching this after we're live, right? We have most of our, most people view the show or listen to it on Google Play or iTunes or whatever. Afterwards, after maybe even a week from now, people are still going to be catching this. What, besides the fact that election day is December 10th, please remember that. What do you want people to come away with this interview, with this discussion? What do you want them to remember? What's your number one thing? Yeah, I just want them to understand my character. Tom, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm the type of guy that wears my heart on my sleeve. I, you know, I'm not going to say to you, no backroom deals, and then you know, turn around and you know, have one downstairs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm just not like that. So my reputation is probably the most valuable thing to me, you know, especially you know, you know, I have children, grandchildren, you know what I mean? So that, that runs to them, mm-hmm. no matter where they are. So 
I, I, you know, I want people to, to understand that, I, you know, I'm sincere. I want to look at some real issues. Now, whether I, anything can be done about it, that I can't answer at this time. But will I give it a, you know, the old college try? Yeah, you better believe it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I mean, the first thing you know, I would do when I get in there is, you know, take a look at the organization chart, right? How, how is the place, how is the city organized? Yeah. Who's who? Maybe put a master plan together. What? <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, you got to start... You know, by understanding who everybody is and what everybody does, right? right? And then, so then how are you going to improve things or how are you going to uh, make things more efficient? One of the things that always bothered me about government since we have an extra minute, um, ever since I got involved back in 1985, is they don't do zero-based budgeting. They always take last year's budget and look at what can we increase. And they never go back to the drawing board and say, well, like if we're in, in, in Lawrence, for example, like... You start with, okay, I want to fully fund the police station because that's my number one priority, or the schools because that's my priority. And you figure out how much money you're going to need, and you fully fund that one thing first as to what you want. And then you look yeah. at what you have left over, right? Yeah, that's... Whereas the way all municipalities work now is you take the entire budget and you increase it by 10% and then figure out where you can spend that money. Yeah, and I, I, you know, uh, my little brother, Norman from that, um, his, uh, his a good friend, big financial successful guy. First thing he says to me in my meet and greet, you got to do bottom up mm -hmm. financing. You got to do bottom up budgeting. You yep. know what I mean? And, you know, I started looking into it. And, uh, you know, there's, I mean, you're only as good as the people that work for you. Right. Right. So I like to surround myself with people that are smarter than me. You know, outsiders, you know I mean? hopefully. Outsiders, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course. Right. People like yourself. Right. So it's, in, it's important, um, you know, to look at these other aspects. So that's not the way it's done today, but. Change is required. Right. So these are things that are worth looking into. How do people get in touch with you? How do they donate to your campaign? How do they help you uh, between now and December 10th, which is the special election in Methuen? Okay, number one uh, place to go is uh, www.jamesarcione.com. And it's S-A-R-C-I-O-N-E. Correct, sir. Okay. And um, it at least give you a little insight. I mean, it's sometimes it's, you know, the 60,000-foot view, you know, but I'll drill in down into specifics of, you know, each area. But it gives you an idea where my head's at. And um, basically just looking, you know, to get up and go out on December 10th, and check a box. Is there a phone it. number where they can reach you if they want to, if they have a Absolutely. question, they want to do a meet and greet? Absolutely. I've, I've met with it. I just did a coffee hour last night in the neighborhood with 12 people. So 978-735-3304. Uh, yep. And I'm more than happy to take any calls um, unless you want to, you know. Say derogatory things. There's always a few of them. I like yeah. those calls myself. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Those. <laughs> Basically, all I get anyway. I might yeah. as well just steer into the skin. <laughs> all right, let's. Uh, I want to thank Jim Sarcioni. He's a local businessman in Methuen. He's running for mayor. The election is December 10th. If you're looking for an absentee ballot, you've got it. I think like this week or next week is, yeah. the, is the, the deadline to do that. Let's thank our sponsors. Let's roll up, Mel. Thank you for the extra minute and a half, uh, Chrissy. Uh, let's thank uh, AJ, A and J Goodwin Plumbing. Peralt Chiropractic in Methuen, W3ON Enterprise Bank, Chris's Barbershop on, um, on Main Street in Salem, New Hampshire. I think he's going to be our guest next week, Chris. 11 Restaurant, uh, 226 Essex Street in Lawrence, Prime Insurance, the Doug Mercurio Law Office in North Reading, Harrison's Roast Beef, which is, I think, now Better Burger Bar, Better Bar Burger, something like that. It changes every day, but I'll let sure. you know. Follow me on Facebook, right? Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Very good. Sounds good. Uh, Pleasant Valley Landscaping Contractors, AFC Urgent Care in Methuen and North End of a Clear Path for Veterans, New England and Lawrence, Tomo and Shaken Seafood right down the street here on Broadway, Salt Broadway in Selma, New Hampshire, Clear Path for Veterans, New England, I already did that, and the Bonfire Wellness Center in North Andover, EIS, Investigation and Gun Training, Century 21, McLennan Real Estate, Zanny Pesci Law Office, and Marston and Sun Construction, EIS, Investigation and Gun Training. Sounds like Melvin Taylor says you gotta go home. So go home already. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.